And now we're going to the other end of the spectrum, from too loose to, uh, to too stiff. Uh, so first of all, I think stiffness after a total knee is one of the most common issues that we face. Um, Mayo Clinic data, uh, if MUA is considered a reoperation, it was up to 5%. So the most common reason for reoperation is, is stiffness leading to MUA. Uh, the prevalence in the literature depends on the criteria you use. So the stricter the criteria, uh, the higher the percentage of patients are going to have stiffness. So it ranges between 1% and 13, depending on uh, how you set those criteria. I think it's important to think about how range of motion impacts uh, functional activity. So if you need 65 degrees for level walking, uh, 85 for stair climbing, 105 for descending stairs. And uh, for extension, if you have more than a five degree contracture, you start to see some pretty significant gait changes, definitely after 10 degrees uh, with some adaptive muscle shortening. So stiffness really is a cause of, of patient dissatisfaction and loss of function. When you look at criteria then, uh, this is a nice uh, uh, paper, a basic consensus on the classification of fibrosis in the knee joint is mild, moderate, and severe, and it kind of correlates with those functional limitations. So if you're in that you know, moderate to severe category, you're dealing with difficulties up and down stairs, and then you're in the severe category really just during flat ground walking. Um, when we look at uh, the etiologies for stiffness after total knee, there's obviously it's a multifactorial problem. Once again, uh, there's patient factors, there's surgical factors, all you can see listed here. There's knee pathology, implant design, post-operative rehab. All these things can lead to a stiff total knee. And then even your post-operative recovery, uh, really on infection, presence of HO, hematoma, CRPS. So it's really complicated. And when you evaluate a patient with stiffness, it's important to try to work through this in a systematic fashion. Um, for patient factors, I mentioned uh, some that have been reported in the literature, uh, younger age, diabetes, smoker, obesity, some are debated, but these have all been uh, reported. Pain syndromes is a big one. Um, knee specific factors, I mean, patients who had prior uh, surgery, they've had OREF, even um, uh, arthroscopic procedures, I think puts up an increased risk uh, for stiffness after total knee, and obviously poor pre-op motion. And you look at your total knee component rotation and basically looking at that patellofemoral compartment. Uh, I think it's important to realize that pre-op range of motion, we all know, impacts post-op range of motion. This is an interesting um, paper that basically looked at the gain in range of motion um, after total knee. You can see if you're stiffer pre-op, you can gain up to 27 degrees, and you kind of go towards this um, this sort of midline around you know 100 degrees of motion. So uh, you know pre-op range of motion is a determinant in terms of how much motion you're going to get after uh, total knee replacement. Uh, when you do the workup, you know, look for, like I said, those pain syndromes on clinical exam, that hypersensitivity, you know, um, you know, kind of CRPS type symptoms, you know, rule out infection, make sure that's not causing stiffness. Uh, you can get axial rotation, like a CT scan, to look for, um, you know, component rotation. We then talk about treatment options, um, MUA, uh, arthroscopic lice of adhesions plus MUA, you have open poly exchange, and then revision, kind of going up the ladder. Uh, for me, I usually see kind of the worst cases, so I'm usually doing revisions just in my practice, but it varies in terms of you know, the types of patients you're seeing with this condition. Um, for early stiffness, um, the three to six month period, initially, you know, you're going to talk to the physical therapist to make sure they're you know, optimized in terms of their anti-inflammatories and icing, follow them closely, see if the range of motion improves. I usually like to do manipulations around six weeks, can do them up to three months. Dr. Pagnano has talked about doing them up to one year with some effect, but usually I think the earlier you get them, the easier you're going to have at getting a really good result after that uh, early post-surgical fibrosis. So I'm looking to do this at six week uh, time point. Um, you know, basically if you have a hard endpoint greater than six months from surgery, that's not an ideal MUA. Uh, this is how I like to do it. Basically kind of gradual flexion on the knee, pushing mostly on the proximal tibia, uh, a little bit on the ankle, but you gotta be careful. You really don't wanna uh, lever too hard and too aggressively because you know you can have some issues um, uh, with uh, trauma after MUA. And then basically right after that, you know, anti-inflammatories, um, you can consider CPM and really making sure they have a really strong anti-inflammatory regimen. I haven't seen this, but it's been reported, right? So, you, you know, quad rupture, patella tendon rupture, supracondylar fracture, you got to be careful. If it fails, uh, can you do it again? I have not done this, but it's been reported that you can do a repeat MUA and you can see some flexion improvement, uh, but only about 50% of patients in this one study actually reach 90 degrees of motion. So if you fail an MUA, you're already in a bad situation.
You can go on to uh, open license and poly exchange. So I think some of the criteria for this is that you want to ideally have a poly that you can downsize. I think at least four millimeters. I think doing a two millimeter downsize, a removal of scar is not going to give you that much. I rarely do this. I think a lot of times it's done and then they scar up again. So I'm not a huge fan of taking them back for this indication, but uh, it has been uh, you know reported in the literature. Um, indications for revision. It's going to be severe stiffness, flexion traction greater than 10 degrees, component malposition, and usually we're going with a both component revision to really allow you the flexibility to rebalance your extension and flexion gaps and really gives you the most power. Uh, we have published actually uh, uh, surgical steps and video and JBGS surgical technique, how to do a rotating hinge for arthrofibrosis. So if you're interested, it just came out and you can see a lot of video step-by-step -step approach that I'll go through now. Um, I prefer hinges for my both component revisions for, for severe arthrofibrosis. I think it gives me a lot of flexibility. You can release the collaterals. You can leave a very loose flexion gap. You just have to focus on the extension gap. Our contemporary hinges have great function, great implant survivorship. And I really do like a chondroloading, um, bone conserving type hinge. I think there's some results out there that support this. When you look at this paper, 40 total knees for arthrofibrosis, Bellman's group, hinges versus CCKs. You can see in blue is your hinge and green is your, um, so your blue is your, is your post-operative range of motion gain. Uh, and you're comparing CCK to hinge and the hinges did have a significantly higher range of motion gain after revision for arthrofibrosis. Uh, when you look at their knee society scores, the RHK group also did perform better um, when the hinges were done with CCK. Granted, these are small numbers, but it does seem that data was, was somewhat compelling. The trade-off, of course, is long-term outcomes. This is from um, Mayo Clinic. You see Matt Abdel is senior author. Basically, looking long-term is with a number of different hinge designs. So, and when you look out to eight to 10 years, they did have some uh, re-operations that were higher with the hinges. Um, so it is a little bit of trade-offs they consider, but you did see on the bottom better range of motion with the hinges compared to the non-hinges as well in this study. So I think it's important when you approach a knee to understand you know, what's the personality of the knee? Is it tight only in flexion? Is it tight in extension and flexion? Or is it really only tight in extension? You can see arthrofibrosis in all of these uh, varieties. So here's a patient on the table. You can see he, this patient has severe stiffness. Um, he's tight basically in both uh, extension and flexion. Had basically already had actually a revision for stiffness and that was undergoing a re-revision. Um, I talked about this yesterday. My standard techniques for this patient Synovectomy, postremedial corner, and then I'm going to do an extensile arthrotomy, medial peel, and basically skeletonize the femur. I do this all in extension. It's part of the standard exposure of pretty much everybody, and it really protects the extensor mechanism and makes the exposure actually quite, quite straightforward. I uh, release the collaterals. You titrate your posterior capsule release based on how much extension you need. You distalize that joint line to try to address Baja, and sometimes you over resect the tibia to try to have this um, distalization of your joint line. Uh, you try to make a you know, small femur. Um, so you reduce your femoral component size. You relatively can lengthen the extensor mechanism um, with patella downsizing and a medial epicondylectomy. And if you need to actually lengthen the extensor mechanism, I've done with a pie crust. So it's kind of like a pulley in a rope. You can lengthen the, the rope or you can make the pulley smaller. Uh, there's basically uh, titrating your posterior capsule release, taking it right off the back of the knee. This is a patient of mine just showing you that move where I cut lower on the tibial, uh, the tibial resection, add distal augments, and you really can have power. I've done this several times now, um, adjusting uh, basically patella baja without having to do a TTO or anything more dramatic. Uh, this just shows you that medial epicondylectomy. So once the hinge is in, you try to decrease the size and the bulk to make it easier to get your arthrotomy around it. So I'll just take the epicondyles off once I have my hinge in place, and it really takes uh, stress off of the extensor mechanism. Also, if you have overly thick patella, you want to downsize that. You can consider using an inlay to try to reduce the, uh, the thickness of your patellofemoral compartment. I've rarely done that, but I have on, I have on occasion. And I'll use this pie crusting technique. If I'm still tight in flexion, you're trying to get better flexion, take a 18 gauge needle and you just do a few pie crusts if you can feel these fibrotic bands and that also works quite well. So here's a case example, basically that patient I showed you, uh, really you know, stiff knee, uh, you saw those intraoperative um, uh, images I show you here. This is basically after he has his trial. I was moderately happy about that, but he came in basically full extension, bent to 95 degrees, and did quite well with conversion to a hinge.
Um, just showing you my uh, basically my numbers. These are a few cases out to a year. Mean of motion, range of motion gain for me is 38 degrees. I've had a couple failures. I'll go through uh, quickly here. Just showing you this one. I did a CCK. This is my last CCK revision. I did did well. Then she got stiff again. I think the hinges are less likely to regress. I mean the CCKs are less likely. Sorry, the hinges are less likely to regress in range of motion. Uh, I think it's more powerful. So I uh, basically re-revised her, distalized her joint line, and she basically did well uh, with good range of motion. Uh, the other uh, tough case I want to show, beware the bony button. This is a case that uh, Rafa showed earlier. We had this ossification around the patellar button, had a revision to a hinge, no bone, and then gradually increased bone formation, basically became completely ankylosed. That was her pre-revision x-ray. Be careful when you see something like that. That's a big problem. I went ahead and basically excised. This is the case I've been talking about. You know, basically just took out that entire uh, enlarged patella and that bony block, gave great exposure and took everything out and then put her on into methicin and then Celebrex, hopefully the rest of her life. Um, we look at our data. HO is a risk factor for poor range of motion gain. So if you see that, it's a different animal. They do not do as well after revision for arthrofibrosis. So in summary, um, basically stiffness is a frequent complication of the total knee. The cause is multifactorial. MUA has early success in about 85% of the time. You can think about scope and open procedures. My go-to is revision because I see those severe cases. And then when you do a hinge knee revision, it's a very systematic approach. We release the collaterals, titrate the capsule, distalize the joint line, downsize the femur, shrink down the epicondyles, pie crust extensor mechanism. And I think you can actually get very good results and very happy patients. Thank you.